Adam Neumann is an Israeli businessman. In 2010, he co-founded WeWork with Miguel McKelvey. Following mounting pressure from investors based on disclosures made in its S-1 filing, Neumann resigned as CEO of WeWork and gave up majority voting control as of September 26, 2019. WeWork also delayed its initial public offering until the end of 2019 amid growing investor concerns over its corporate governance, valuation, and outlook for the business. On September 30, 2019, WeWork formally withdrew its S-1 filing and postponed the IPO. He served as WeWork's CEO from 2010 to 2019. In 2021 his net worth is estimated to be around 1.6 billion US dollars. Chapter 1 – Early Life and Education The Neumann family, from Israel, is of Ashkenazi Jewish descent. Newman's parents, both physicians Vivit and Doran Neumann, divorced when he was seven years old. He and his younger sister, Israeli model Adi Neumann, moved to the United States with their mother for her medical residency. Due to his dyslexia, Neumann could not read or write until third grade. In 1990, after four years in the U.S., they returned to Israel and settled in kibbutz near Am. He graduated from the Israeli Naval Academy and served as an officer in the Israeli Navy for five years, and was discharged with the rank of Seren. He later attended the Zicklin School of Business at Baruch College in New York City. Chapter 2 – Career Prior to founding WeWork, Neumann founded a children's clothing company, Crawlers. Neumann and McKelvey began working together, having met through a mutual friend, on Green Desk in 2008, a shared workspace business focusing on sustainability, the precursor to WeWork. The pair sold their interest in Green Desk and using the funds along with a $15 million investment from Brooklyn real estate developer Joel Schreiber for a 33% interest in the company, they founded WeWork in 2010. Neumann stated that with WeWork, he intended to replicate the feeling of togetherness and belonging he felt in Israel and that he thought was lacking in the West. According to the Wall Street Journal, Neumann chartered a Gulfstream G650 for a trip from the United States to Israel during the summer of 2018. During the flight, Neumann and his friends spent much of the flight smoking marijuana. After the flight landed in Israel, the flight crew found a cereal box stuffed with marijuana and reported it to the jet owner. Fearing a marijuana trafficking incident, the owner of the jet ordered it to return to the U.S. Neumann and his friends had to book a separate flight back. In 2018, WeWork faced a lawsuit from a former employee who identified issues of sexual harassment and other inappropriate behaviors in the workplace. In her statement, she mentioned that Neumann plied with tequila shots during her interview with the company. Shortly after this claim was made, WeWork put an end to its unlimited beer for employees and implemented a policy of only four beers per day in the New York office. On September 22, 2019, there were reports, from outlets such as the Wall Street Journal, that various WeWork directors were planning on asking Neumann to step down as CEO, after a tumultuous week in which his eccentric behavior and drug use came to light prior to a planned IPO. The Wall Street Journal reported that he had taken $700 million out of WeWork before the IPO, among other details, and undermined his position at the company. Neumann also repaid $5.9 million that the company had paid him in exchange for his trademark of the word we. On September 24, 2019, he resigned and Artie Minson and Sebastian Gunningham were named as successors. In October 2019, the Wall Street Journal reported that Neumann would receive close to $1.7 billion from stakeholder SoftBank for stepping down from WeWork's board and severing most of his ties to the company. Weeks later, minority shareholders filed a lawsuit against Neumann and other WeWork officials for breach of its fiduciary duties. On 5 March 2021, Forbes listed his net worth at $750 million US dollars, having dropped off the Forbes billionaires list in 2020. Chapter 3 – Investments In 2012, 
he partnered with Ken Horn of Alchemy Properties and Joel Schreiber and purchased for $68 million the top floors of the Woolworth Building which they converted into condominiums. Neumann became a partner of Intercure, an Israeli cannabis company led by Ahud Barak, former Prime Minister of Israel, in 2018. Neumann has also invested in Equity B, a startup for tech investors, and Selena, a hospitality company. Neumann has purchased buildings and then leased the space back to WeWork. Observers noted this as a potential conflict of interest and one that would not be allowed if WeWork were a public company. In early 2020, Neumann invested $10 million into multimodal shared mobility company GoToGlobal, taking a 33% equity stake in the company. During his tenure as CEO of WeWork, Neumann purchased $90 million worth of residences, including a 60-acre estate in Westchester County, New York, a 6,000-square-foot condominium near Gramercy Park, two homes in the Hamptons and a $21 million mansion in Corta Madera, California. Neumann has begun purchasing apartment buildings, and as of early 2022 owns some 4,000 apartments worth about $1 billion. Chapter 4 – Personal Life Neumann lives in the Greenwich Village neighborhood of New York City with his wife, Rebecca Neumann, and their five children, including two pairs of twins. Rebecca is a cousin of Gwyneth Paltrow. Neumann's sister, Addie Neumann, is a model and was Miss Teen Israel. In 2018, Neumann gave a keynote speech at an event held by Uja Federation of New York where he spoke of observing Shabbat with his family every week and the role Judaism has played in his personal and professional growth. The Wall Street Journal reported in 2019 that Neumann had aspirations to live forever, become the world's first trillionaire, expand we work to the planet Mars, become Israel's prime minister, and become president of the world. A September 2019 Vanity Fair article reported that Neumann made claims that he convinced Rahm Emanuel to run for the presidency of the United States, used J.P. Morgan Chase's CEO Jamie Dimon as his personal banker, convinced Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman to improve the standing of women in Saudi Arabia, and claimed to be working with Jared Kushner on the Trump administration's peace plan for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict.